My name is David Ades. I offer life coaching at a reasonable rate. And today I'm talking about don't take my kindness for weakness. First, I'm going to talk about why this happens in the first place. Then I'm going to talk about overcoming this obstacle. The obstacle of not getting as much respect as you feel you deserve. Not being taken as seriously as you feel you should be. Or generally, not being rewarded for being good or kind or nice or agreeable. This is how childhood functions. Be a good little boy. Be a good little girl. Mommy and daddy love you. You get to play. If you're not good, get punished. If you're good, the teacher's happy with you. If you're not good, you get punished. This is a very important lesson for us to learn when we are young, because the ability to be agreeable, to be nice, kind, good, is how civilization functions basically. The reason we can stick together, even though we're not really sticking together very much, but in theory, the way that we basically stick together is we are each capable of being basically good to one another. So the idea is learn that when you're a child, then if everything goes well, if you have healthy development, healthy environments, relationships, so on and so forth, you will transition to adulthood with some bumps along the way, of course, learning new things like, okay, goodness, kindness, being agreeable, it's all well and good, I can do that, let's put that away, now it's time to prioritize other things. Because the adult world doesn't function on just being good and kind and agreeable. I have to have boundaries, I have to be serious, I have to be focused, no nonsense, I have to bring value to the table. I have to learn to defend myself, assert myself, stand up for myself, go after my needs and wants and dreams and goals, I have to have diligence and persistence and healthy aggression. These things, sometimes, some of these things have nothing to do with being agreeable. So this is part of why it's seen as a weakness. And kindness is taken for weakness. If you are not capable of the qualities that adulthood requires, many contexts in our lives have maybe nothing to do with being agreeable. If you're not capable of accessing those qualities within yourself, if you don't have them or you don't have conscious access to them, it is a weakness because when times get tough or when it's time to work or when it's time to focus or when it's time to stand up for yourself, you can't. You're kind of incapacitated by a compulsion to be agreeable. Yet it's so important, which is why it must be guarded. If the ability to be good is what keeps us basically together, it's not about getting rid of all of it. It's about uh, gaining a more dynamic personality. I can be good, but I can also be bad. I can be good, but I can also be serious. I can be good, but I can also stand up for myself. It's not about getting rid of it. It's about having a more dynamic personality, which is a function of mental health. In order to empathize with each other, we must have weak points in us. We must have vulnerabilities. We must have soft spots. So it's not about getting rid of them. It's about gaining fortification around them and the dynamic enough personality to do something other than that. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So now let's talk about overcoming it. This is easier said than done. It's simple, but that doesn't mean it's easy. It's simple, but it's difficult, sometimes grueling. The psychologist Ernest Becker once wrote that the reward for being good is depression. So this is a rocky journey to be good and you think that's what you're supposed to do and then, you know, what you expect to happen doesn't happen and now you have to Go back to the drawing board and think about how everybody sucks and you're the only good person and, and so on and so forth. Or you have to step into that dark, sometimes evil feeling territory of standing up for yourself and being more aggressive and so on and so forth. And this is what it is. It's a double-edged sword of, of course, we need more exposure. The way that we learn things is through exposure, especially social exposure. That's how we learned to be very good. So now it's time for social exposure where other things are either necessary or appropriate or at least allowed to happen. We need to take measured risks within relatively safe relationships and environments to do something other than be agreeable when it comes up in the moment, right? Be patient with yourself, be compassionate with yourself, but take measured risks like within this context, this relationship, this environment, 
it's okay if I stick up for myself a little bit, or I'm going to have to find out if it's okay if I assert myself a little bit or ask for what I want more, things of this nature. We have to test reality with what we have, which is what we're all doing. The only way to move forward in life and grow is to continue to test reality so it can teach us and our, ins in not instinct, maybe instinct, intuition, our gut can also teach us based on the evidence flowing between our inner world and the outer world. This is how reality teaches us. We are just awareness and we have an inner world and we have an outer world and we have to, we have to get these exposed to one another so we can learn. So this looks like, in, in regards to this video, continuing to be agreeable, but paying more attention to it and viewing the results of it. Like, are you, is, is something good coming out of it? Is something good for both people coming out of it? Are you getting what you want? Which is a touchy subject because people who are overwhelmingly agreeable are almost 100% of the time going to struggle with getting what they want, receiving, desire, ambition, aspiration, healthy aggression, tending to needs. So start paying attention to your tendency to be nice. What kind of emotion takes you into that place? Is it a positive emotion? Like it's coming from a conscious, sincere wish to be generous or something? Or is it coming from like a looming fear or anxiety? Like I just have to be good. I, I just have to be nice. So then we're talking about unconscious inhibitions that are quite difficult to work on uh, through our own experience. You might open up about this subject to someone in your life uh, that you can trust. You might work with a life coach. You might work with a therapist. But regardless, it's about testing reality. And if you can have more support for yourself, you will be more in the game. You will be more capable of staying in the game of, of testing reality. So both paying more attention to the nature, the phenomena that surround our good behavior. Where is it coming from? Why are we doing it? When does it happen? Are we doing it to avoid something? Are we doing it to make something uh, certain happen? Like a certain thing happen? And on the other end, it's the other side of the coin, uh, standing up for ourselves, asking more for what we want, taking measured risks. That's what it's about, taking measured risks, getting a clearer view of where you are now, which is the first thing we mentioned, paying more attention. And based on that, taking measured risks, in what environments, in what contexts, in what uh, relationships is it safe for me to maybe practice a measured risk of asking for more, more for what I want, uh, asserting my needs, my desires, maybe even for myself. Like uh, it might feel like an inconvenience even for myself to tend to my needs and wants, but like how can I take a measured risk of inconveniencing myself? Uh, which is maybe what risk feels like all of the time. You're inconveniencing yourself. You might be inconveniencing the other person. You don't know until you try. And uh, that reality testing is how we get closer to the reality of our inner worlds. It's how we get closer to the reality of the external world. And over time, bridge the gap between the two, which is how we feel alive this life. If you resonate with this, schedule a free 30 to 45 minute session with me by clicking the first link in the description. Reach out to me through Instagram at Coach David Ades or through my email, David at dying to live dot blog. Like this video if you do like it. Comment your thoughts down below. Subscribe to see more. And I will talk to you soon.